Hi, hello and welcome, a microbe hunter here. Behind me you see a little pond uh, and in this video I would like to uh, give you a few tips on how to collect pond water samples uh, for amateur microscopy. Well, when uh, you collect uh, pond water using a little glass jar or a little container, what many people sometimes do is, is they simply scoop uh, some water um, from, from the top of the pond and then they take a drop of water and they want to observe it under the microscope. And then often the disappointment is, is quite, uh, quite large because uh, you almost do not see anything. Um, and uh, the reason is, is that in the open water body, um, the concentration of interesting microorganisms to observe is actually quite low. So uh, most of the microorganisms, uh, little paramecia, uh, other ciliates, uh, maybe small tiny worms and so on, can be found in the sediment that actually um, is, is uh, on the bottom um, of the pond. So uh, as a general rule of thumb, when you want to uh, collect water samples, make sure that you also collect uh, some of the sludge, uh, some, um, some solid material, because if you cannot see anything on the microscope slide, then generally and it's also like this that uh, you will also not see anything uh, when you look uh, through the microscope. Okay, this seems to be a good place. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to disturb the sediment uh, a little bit. I'm going to catch um, some of this uh, stuff here. And uh, this is going to contain uh, many more microorganisms and I think it's going to be much more interesting to observe. This water, for example, is uh, way too clear. Um, you will not find uh, any interesting microorganisms. But right next to it, uh, there are some small puddles and pools and uh, it looks a little bit greenish. And this is actually a sign uh, that we can find some algae and some other microorganisms here. Um, so you have to be able to see something with your unaided eye in order to actually uh, have a sufficiently high concentration so that you can actually also see something interesting under the microscope. So tip number one is, is, is uh, do not only collect uh, simply uh, the, uh, the clear water, but also collect uh, some of the sludge, some of the some plant material, some deposits, some sediment um, as well. Um, or what you can also do is, is if you have some algae floating on top of a pond, um, then you can also take some tweezers and uh, take uh, along some of that material because also on these algae you can find a lot of microorganisms growing. Well I think I do have to correct myself a little bit here because there are some water organisms that uh, float around uh, in the open water body. What we have here is a little water flea. Uh, they are crustaceans so they are related to the crabs, uh, the two large white structures that you see here. These are the eggs of the water flea and they float around uh, happily and uh, basically they can be caught quite easily when you scoop up uh, a full load of, of water. However um, in uh, ponds where there are fish maybe they're they are not as abundant because fish of course like to eat them uh, so the bottom line is is uh, take along whatever you find uh, take tweezers collect some of the decaying material floating on top of the water um, scoop up some water scratch off some algae whatever um, take it along uh, and have a look under the microscope uh, and uh, do a little bit of uh, simply nature observation and uh, nature exploration a little bit of trial and error I think that's the way to go. Yeah, okay, and a second uh, tip, also be aware, uh, there are different uh, type of ponds and uh, they differ um, often in their so-called, in their oxygen content. Um, so there are certain ponds, especially those that have moving water, um, which are very oxygen rich and you can find uh, also more algae there and uh, also more paramecia and other ciliates because these are microorganisms that require um, a lot of oxygen. And there, is, uh, there are also other types of pond, mostly which have stagnant water, a lot of organic material, maybe leaves from the trees that have fallen into the pond. Um, and there are a lot of decomposers there and bacteria. And what they do, especially the bacteria, they are really lowering um, the oxygen concentration uh, in the pond. And uh, this uh, reduces also the possibility for some of the um, other microorganisms like uh, ciliates to grow. Um, so my advice is, is, is uh, that you check out different um, types of, of water bodies and, and also uh, collect uh, water from different 
different areas of the same pond um, because even in the same pond you do not always have the same oxygen concentration. Um, and uh, if you do not have a pond uh, next to you in your area then I would also um, uh, suggest that you maybe check out certain um, fountains, water fountains. Um, occasionally there are, um, are also some um, areas where you can collect algae and this is also the place where you find other microorganisms. So um, you have to simply uh, keep uh, your eyes open and look around a little bit and it's also important to understand that uh, if you have uh, a water body somewhere make sure that the, 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 the amount of water that is in there is sufficiently large that it's actually able to retain the water over a longer time period. Now if it's just a small puddle which dries up very quickly then of course also many of the microorganisms die um, and if it rains then of course water is going to collect but you might not have enough time the, the microorganisms might not have enough time uh, to actually reproduce there so you have to find um, a place uh, or a, uh, a body of water which is sufficiently large that it does not dry out uh, between the dry seasons. Now it's quite uh, possible that the water that you look at uh, looks quite green and turbid and you would expect a lot of microorganisms in the water but then when you take out uh, a jar uh, with the water you're going to see that actually the water is quite clear and transparent um, and this is actually a sign that uh, the, the, number, the concentration of microorganisms is too low and in this case I recommend uh, that you try an enrichment culture and there are two ways how you can do that. Um, first of all you might want to add a little bit um, a few drops of artificial fertilizer um, and uh, this will stimulate the growth of certain algae. So you just uh, add a drop, you make sure that the drop uh, is well dissolved uh, in, the, in the jar and then you place the jar in a bright area and uh, then it's uh, the algae are going to start to do photosynthesis, the level of oxygen is going to um, go up um, in, in the jar. Make sure that you don't put it into direct sunlight because it might cause overheating and this again causes the, the oxygen level to drop. But this way you can actually try to enrich uh, some of the algae which actually also makes a quite interesting observation. Um, and a second uh, possibility for enrichment is, uh, refers, uh, is the enrichment of, uh, of uh, uh, paramecia and other ciliates and in this ca case I recommend that you crush a wheat grain and you drop this wheat grain into your water sample and then you leave it there for um, about two or three days. And what's going to happen is the following is that this wheat grain, the starch in the wheat grain is now going going to serve as a food for bacteria in the water. And paramecia and other ciliates, they will now feed on these bacteria. So what essentially what you're doing is, is you're establishing a small food chain. And then after three days you can take out this wheat grain, you're going to see it looks all very often a little bit slimy. Um, and if you're lucky, um, then this uh, slime layer around the wheat grain will contain uh, countless uh, paramecia and other microorganisms. But uh, sometimes it doesn't doesn't work quite well and the reason is, is is because if there were too few paramecia in the original water sample in the first place uh, then of course you're also not going to find any later on. Um, so here again you have to try a little bit, yeah, trial and error. That's basically something that you have to do. Well uh, this uh, was it again. I hope uh, that you also enjoyed uh, this little video springtime and therefore of course I had to check out the various uh, water sources uh, around in my village and uh, I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. Bye bye and uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. See you.